Meet the Wanderer. Previously Scaramouche, now introduced in 3.3 Genshin as a playable Nemo 5-star Catalyst character. Introduces the first of its kind unique flying mechanic and allows you to play as a fully manifested selfish airbender. YouTube Frogs, welcome to a first impressions video and Constellation Zero gameplay review of Wanderer or Scaramouche or Wandermouche or Scarer? Whatever you want to call him. We'll be breaking down how his kit works, how I'd recommend to build him, and showcasing his gameplay. Quick disclaimer, footage in this video was recorded early on the media server prior to official release. Alright, let's dive right into it. Wanderer's kit reminds me of Yoimiya, but add in flying, and his burst has decently solid multipliers on the mid-level cooldown of 15 seconds at 60 energy. In play, he feels easy to pick up. His elemental skill allows him to fly for a set duration, and you use normal spam or normal charge spam. Sometimes you fire your burst and he deals a nice amount of damage. Nothing super complicated, but there are a couple things to pay attention to when you're slicing things in mid-air. With a purely selfish design, Wander is the standard of standard DPSers. He scales off of attack, crit, anemo damage bonus, and anything related to normal charge attacks. This is actually contrary to what you may expect from Catalyst users, who have typically been drivers or elemental mastery related since anemo catalysts are easy bus drivers for reaction based compositions. Wander is the exception. He maintains a very similar build path to Xiao and resembles that greedy playstyle. Normal charge attack. Wander performs a very simple 3-hit Windblade combo, dealing single target Nemo damage on hit. His charge attack deals AoE and Nemo damage in a rectangular column in front of him. As a Catalyst user, his normal charge multiplier values are very strong even at level 6, which further improve with his elemental skill boost. These multipliers are purely attack percent based and are as strong as scaling talent multipliers for his overall damage. Elemental skill, Song of the Wind. He first deals AoE and Nemo damage before launching into the air, entering the wind-favored state and slightly altering his normal charge attacks. His normal attacks become minor AoE and Nemo damage wind blades, dealing a multiplicative percent of his normal attack talent multiplier. His charge attacks become slightly wider AoE and Nemo damage explosions, dealing a multiplicative percent of his charge attack talent multiplier. A full duration of his ability lasts about 10 seconds, and he generates one Anemo Orb on average every 2.5 seconds for a total of 4 during the entire base duration. The cooldown is pretty short, at 6 seconds, which counts down after his whole ability ends. So each activation point has roughly a 16 second cycle, shorter if it ends early. This is what a full duration N3 spam looks like. In total, you'll get about 17 total hits standing absolutely still. With N2 charge spam, you'll get an identical number of hits and no stamina consumption during his charge attacks. Now the difference between N3 and N2C is that third hit. N3 is a smaller AoE and deals 143.5% of your normal attack multiplier. Charge attack is a larger AoE and deals 134.8% of his charge attack multiplier. At level 6, the difference is about 50% raw multiplier value after calculating the normal attack talent or a 25% relative increase from normal to charge 200% to about 250%. However, N3 is a lot easier to spam in a rotation, as it's just spam left click. During his wind favored state, you may have noticed a sharper audio cue and a flash on Wanderer's body during these spams. This is a centered 4 passive, Gales of Reverie, Descent effect activating. If the Wanderer dashes while mid-air, it will consume no additional fight points and summon 4 additional wind blades dealing 35% multiplier value each. The chance on each hit is 16%, scaled by 12% each time it doesn't proc. So this is what that looks like visually. 84% of the time, you'll have Descent within the first 4 hits before it resets. So on average, N3 Dash is spammable. This is what N3 Dash looks like. Now personally, I prefer just using his dash whenever I hear the audio cue on the next attack cancel. I found that using it on activation, no matter where in your rotation, will most likely deal the most damage given whatever situation. Because these dashes are sporadic and generated on chance, N3 spam is the easiest to incorporate. This is what that looks like. And finally, you may have noticed this hexagon aura when activating his elemental skill. This is his Ascension 1 passive. If the initial cast that deals AoE and Nemo damage comes in contact with Pyrohydro Electrocryo, his flying state gains buffs. Hydro grants point plus 20, or duration plus 20%, or 2 seconds with natural decrease. Pyro is attack plus 30%, Cryo is crit rate plus 20%, and Electro is 0.8 energy on average per hit. And 3 here counts as 1 hit because it's 0.2 seconds, not 0.1. Two of these buffs can coexist at the same time. Practically, I found that these buffs to be extras on whatever team comp you decide to run. I do not recommend building around the buffs as they are weaker than just solid supports for him. That being said, double buffs that are the easiest to activate are Hydro Cryo and Hydro Electro for Freeze or Electro Charge Driver related team comps. But again, this passive should be viewed as fully extra and not built around. 
Elemental Burst. Wanderer kicks an anemo infused black hole towards his enemies, dealing a very quick 5 instances of an AoE anemo damage. If he's in flying state while casting, his burst will stop the state. It's a very simple DPS ability with a pretty strong multiplier value sitting at 60 energy and 15 second cooldown. With his greedy playstyle and only about 4 anemo particles generated, he cannot self sustain his own burst each win favor rotation with a usual DPS build. Practically, you'd expect to burst every other rotation, as you'll likely be prioritizing pure DPS for his artifacts. From near zero energy and 123% on my Wanderer, this is what solo energy generation looks like against the crowd Registine. Now, for Wanderer's talent priority, normal attack talent definitely scales the best. It provides his largest scaling for raw multiplier values and from his elemental skill boost. Elemental skill provides more bonuses to his normal charge attacks, but receives really heavy diminishing returns at higher levels. Even from level 6 to level 7, you only get 2% charge attack and 2.5% normal attack damage when the base is already 143 and 134. On principle though, it should be leveled in parallel with the normal attack talent, but can be left alone after base investment. Elemental Burst is just raw burst damage multiplier, which is as important as often as he bursts. As a hyper carry, Wanderer ideally receives maximum talent investment for all skills. But for a general recommendation, I'd go normal attack over elemental skill greater than or equal to elemental burst. So that's a breakdown of what to expect from his kit. The grand overview at Constellation Zero describes him as a pseudo AOE Anemo hyper carry DPS responsible for most of his team's damage taking up most of the on field time. His main practical DPS is not restricted by energy, but merely a flat 6 second cooldown making his rotational elemental skill mechanic a guaranteed 16 second cycle assuming no early cancelling or additional point consumption. With the standard DPS build path not common for Anemo Catalyst users, Wander aims for raw DPS stats only. Elemental Burst can be used to lead or to end his rotation whenever it is available. Because it does substantial amounts of nuke DPS, energy recharge substats are very favorable in order to improve the cycling of his burst. Team compositions can also assist with this restriction to provide an upgrade of one cycle per burst rather than two cycles without sacrificing his own selfish stats. I have found solid comfort running just 120% recharge and bursting every other rotation. For a burst per rotation, I would estimate at least 150% recharge is needed or a team dedicated to anemo orb funneling. So his stat priority at Constellation Zero looks like so. Attack and crit over energy recharge and anemo damage bonus and normal attack damage bonus where available. Weapons. Let's first take a look at his signature, the bell. Not the bell you may be thinking of. High base attack, medium crit damage secondary, normal attack speed boost, normal attack damage boost, lots of it, and it gets stronger as time goes on. Gains 4.8% per second naturally, 9.6% per attack, caps at 48%. With how the Wanderer plays in just 2.5 seconds, the weapon will cap its bonus, leaving max value for the rest of 7.5 seconds during his win favorite state. So this signature weapon is hyper specific and only grants bonuses to normal attack damage. Wander is the only Catalyst character that uses this to the full potential. Any of our other Catalyst DPSers typically have charge attacks involved in a majority of their DPS rotation, which this weapon grants zero bonuses for. So, this weapon is hyper niche and only optimal for Wanderer. The good thing? Well, we have quite a good chunk of previous 5-star or 4-star weapons to use for him. In fact, his signature only gains a 10-15% boost over other weapon choices that suit him well. While that is decently significant, the fact that his signature is so specific makes it not ideal to commit to. I would say that only the true Scar Shrimps, or Wander Shrimps, I don't know what they're called now, combined with willpower will invest in higher than R1 of his signature. Personally, even if I Constellation 6 him, I'm not sure that I'd commit to R5. That's besides the point. Let's get back to weapon recommendations. So for 5 stars, we actually have a lot of good choices. Lost Prayer, usually not a great choice because it takes so long to ramp up from 12 to 16 seconds, but Wander actually makes good use of this. You'll get about 50% of its passive efficacy from the weapon on average, combined with super solid crit rate and decent base attack. This is one of the easiest to build around. His crit rate ascension stat and the crit rate secondary from this weapon means instant crit damage mass for a good ratio. Tagra's Verity, just for the base attack and crit damage. The passive won't really affect his normal charge attacks unless you hit the fourth cycle and stack the passive fully for the elemental damage bonus, which for most of it won't occur that often. Scoured Atlas, high base attack, strong attack percent secondary, elemental damage bonus, and extra passive damage. Standard stuff. Memory of Dust, attack percent steroid. If you focus on crit rate and crit damage on your artifacts, this weapon actually rounds out your attack percent pretty well. The shield bonus for double stack damage is extra, but it's possible to incorporate from someone like Layla, so there's even more benefit from that. At the end of the day, the best weapon for you depends on your team comp. A Bennett-focused Wanderer team comp will prefer crit weapons for obvious reasons. 
Bennett will provide a large amount of attack for Wanderer and also activate the 30% attack boost from an infused Ascension 1 passive, making attack percent weapons less valuable here. Non-Bennett team comps can use attack percent weapon and then focus purely on crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge on artifacts for easier build time. Now for 4-star weapons. As with the 5-star weapons, 4-star also has a nice roster of decently DPS-based catalysts. Witsith. This will be the number one 4-star choice in all situations, even if the passive procs Elemental Mastery and doesn't benefit him. With attack or elemental damage bonus, Wanderer's DPS during that time will rival any 5-star weapon choice. Solar Pearl. Battle pass based weapon with crit rate and normal attack damage increases. It's only for 6 seconds during its win favorite state, but that's still 60% uptime. Dodoko Tails. Please free event weapon with a mixture of attack percent and charge attack damage for N2C spam playstyle. This doesn't work that well for N3 spam. I have Perception and Blackcliff Agate. These are lower valued weapons, but still just for strict DPS and are usable. These are about the lowest value for Wanderer though. You should really have something better than these two weapons. Beyond those weapons that I mentioned, I wouldn't generally recommend energy recharge weapons because they reduce his general DPS by far too much to compensate for burst uptime. All right, now let's get into artifact setups. Wanderer wants DPS and DPS only. Things that boost attack, crit, anemo damage, normal attack damage, charge attack damage, yes. So our best DPS choice is the new Desert Pavilion set. He gets a Nemo damage bonus from the 2-piece, he gets attack speed, and normal charge attack increase from the 4-piece. Dedicated Wanderer remains will want to camp here for a bit. Any other 4-piece choices? Well, we have multiple normal charge attack boosting sets. 4-piece Shimanawas works great because typically burst uptime is easily sacrificable for his autos. 4-piece Echoes if you're 30 ping or under, which is like no one, kinda, except those who live in Hoyo vs. Basement or something. And then we have 4-piece Heart of Depth. If you have a set lying around and don't mind useless 2-piece Hydro, the 4-piece is useful for him. Otherwise, his artifacts will resemble old school Xiao Heizo. 2-piece Anemo or attack percent for general uses. We do now have double Anemo combo though, with 2-piece Desert Pavilion and 2-piece Viridescent Venerer. 2-piece attack percents are better for non-Bennett team comps, but in general, whatever grants him fighting stats, he's down for it. Look at mine. He's chilling with 2-piece 2-piece and he's got pretty solid substats. Looks good, yeah? This is with Lost Prayer. Nice. Alright, how about main stat choices? Well. For once, we can stick with just one. 98% of Constellation Zero builds will follow standard DPS, attack timepiece, a Nemo Goblet, and a crit or crit damage mask. This is about as textbook as it gets. At Constellation Zero, there's very little deviation from this build. Attack Goblet is usable instead of a Nemo, but it's about 50% as efficient. Energy recharge timepiece over attack percent is pretty adventurous for burst uptime. It sacrifices, in my opinion, too much of the base damage value. Yeah, easy to build. Attack Anemo Crit. All right, time for a gameplay showcase. He'll be running the Lost Prayer at R180 with two-piece Viridescent and two-piece Shimanawas. His stat distribution is very high-end at 88 to 210, with additional recharge able to focus on maximize substats since I'm not running a dedicated portal set. Talents will be sitting at level six. So here's the thing about Wanderer. As a hyper carry DPS, his team roster is going to consist of off-field supports, but he's also an Anemo Catalyst user. Usually when thinking of hyper carry DPS, they only have one or two options to maximize their viability, or else they are crippled and can't do much. Wanderer blasts through as a versatility monster in this situation. His off-field support roster is basically anyone in the game that either 1. Groups enemies for his pseudo AoE, 2. Connects with normal attacks, or 3. Pure off-field Pyro Hydro Electro Crowd Burst to complete a reaction type. The supports that work the best with him in any situation are those that counter the enemies that you're fighting. Up against more single target focus, focus on more single target DPS supports or enhancers and remove grouping. Up against more AoE, focus on more grouping supports. Up against highly mobile enemies, consider a freeze team with Wander as the lead. We have all the supports that satisfy the diversity of these situations. The only support that is optimal in every situation is, you guessed it, Farazan, who also happens to be on Wander's banner and is the newest 4-star Anemo character. Without diving into too many details, Farazan is the best-in-slot all-in-one Anemo DPS support, but he does need immense energy. For this reason, my Farazan and all these showcases will be a makeshift noblesse artifacts that give her a bunch of recharge. And running from Vogus. So, if you're in need of 1. Groups enemies for a pseudo AoE. We have both Kazuha and Venti who work perfect with him. They both also happen to be Anemo characters and will benefit mutually from energy shared during their respective abilities. Venti works best against light enemies and combined with Wanderer's chunked AoE, they easily shred the HP of small waves. 
Godzilla works better in universal conditions, able to create a field of elemental swirls that water can fly in and focus fire enemies. In the current abyss, these annoying doggos get absolutely shredded with this 3 Nemo team, incorporating Farazan for Nemo Shred, Kazawa for grouping, and Bennett for attack boosts. I typically lead with Favonius Farazan, using elemental skill to proc Favonius and nothing more, and then using her burst to utilize her buffing and shredding. Bennett goes next running EQ for subtle energy return from elemental skill after his burst, and then Kazawa sets up his EQ. Wander then starts his rotation. To have full uptime on rotations, I needed Xyphos Moonlight on Kazawa and maximize recharge on Farazan and Bennett with very little screen time and essentially use their skills only 3 times per wander rotation. This works best in AoE settings. This next demo provides an example of Condition 3, Pure Off-Field Pyrohydro Electro Cryo Burst, complete a reaction type, where I choose units that support a freeze variation to counter the doggo's high mobility. This team's damage output is much lower in favor of freeze abuse. Favonius Xingqiu and Favonius Layla lead with EQs and then Favonius Farazan sets up for wander. See a trend with Favonius? Man, what a wonderful weapon. I use Wander's A1 passive dashes to dodge doggo attacks as their corrosion eats through shields instead of using them right away for maximized DPS. Sometimes, those free dashes actually are much more valuable than the DPS. How about a team for Condition 2? Connects with normal attacks. Well, here's an old school support lineup for you. Wander with Xingqiu, Beidou, and Bennett. A mixed single target AoE DPS team that uses Wander as both the on field DPS and driver for swirled reactions and to connect with Xingqiu and Beidou's burst. Leading with Xingqiu's EQ, I choose not to snapshot Beidou's burst within Bennett to increase Wander's on field time on Bennett and to showcase Wander damage over the other characters. In general, though, it is correct to Beidou after Bennett to snapshot the buff into her burst. And finally, condition number four. But if you do have his signature weapon and attack speed increasing supports um, <clears throat> C2 Jean or C6 Yun Jin, there are attack speed wander layouts to try out. Otherwise, you can also try him as the enable driver in gender related team comps with Nahida or Traveler, or run him back in old school national comp with Wander as the on-field for Xiangling slash Xingqiu combo. He's pretty versatile wherever you decide to throw him in. And last but not least, if you do happen to have a high constellation gene, she becomes one of the best supports for him. Not only does her constellation 2 have increased attack speed, but her constellation 4 has Anemo Res decreased by 40% within her burst. So, what do I think of Wander? I think he's a really fun flying machine, though he does have some ego issues. All good. Oyoverse is definitely trying different things with these unique mechanics, and I think it's adding a lot more flavor to these fun compositions. As an Anemo DPS, he's already pretty limited in terms of usual quote meta choices, but he compensates by providing an easy to pick up playstyle with high multiplier values, simple and straightforward builds, and versatile team comps. I might decide to have a little fun in games with more investment, who knows. For now though, those are my first impressions for Constellation Zero Wanderer. Keep your eyes peeled for an upcoming guide on the rest of Wanderer's kit. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all Wanderer Wanters become Wanderer Havers. Thanks as always for watching, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Take care.